Hi guys, this is a video demonstration of the Test Electronics Protector Style Test Fixture. Now the unique thing about this protector is that it's anti-static. It's a carbon composite, uh, not to be confused with carbon fiber which has conductive strands of fiber going through it. This is a carbon powder mixed with the epoxy resin which evenly distributes the conductivity across the entire surface to dissipate the static evenly. Uh, carbon fiber would zap things in specific locations, but this dissipates it all really nice and evenly. And the way this works, and the way all probers work, even the ones that aren't anti-static, is they have this lever on the side, and when you pull the lever it raises the, the pins up. Uh, that's the reason it's called a protector, because the pins are normally down inside this, so they can't be damaged. And a lot of times a fixture like this will be used on boards uh, where there's heavy components like heavy transformers or big parts where the board's heavy and when you place the board on the fixture, if it was a pro board like a regular fixture, it, would hit, it could hit the pins and break them off. Uh, but this one, the pins are protected in the protector, so you can't break them off. So I'll show you how it works. You put the board in, close it, pull the handle and it probes the boards. I don't know, or probes the points. I don't know if you can see this or not, uh, the pins moving up and down in here. Uh, if not, let me pull this up to the camera a little closer so you can have a better look. So let's, there's the, there's up, down, if you can see the pins rising up, that's the way it works when you turn the, the handle. Put it back down here. Now you may have also noticed that this protector has a keyboard mounted on top. Uh, that's just because this is controlled with a computer. Uh, the computer programs the board and uh, then tests it after it's programmed. And basically they line a bunch of these up side by side and people work on testing each board. And they didn't have enough space for the keyboard. So we mounted it on here uh, with these brackets some foam rubber underneath this edge to hold the keyboard down and stable. Uh, just fairly simple. It can be taken off fairly easy when it, if it needs to be replaced. Uh, so the computer connects back here to these USB ports and power of course goes in right there. And let me show you the inside. I'll turn this upside down and take the bottom cover off. It's good to see how easy something like this can be taken apart. Uh, we built these to be taken apart. Now I can set this upside down on the keyboard because the, the side brackets are protecting it. Now all you have to do to take this apart is unscrew two screws on the bottom panel. And the bottom panel will come right out just this easy and give you access to the inside so that now you can make all the modifications and changes you need to make. Uh, what's in here now is, that right here is the power supply, uh, Texas Instrument Programmer, which just goes out to the USB, and uh, National Instruments Data Acquisition, which just goes out to a USB. And here's just some extra uh, taps off the data lines that they use for troubleshooting. So that's all that's in this fixture. And that's how you access it. That's how you access the bottom uh, to make changes in the wiring if you need to. Now to get to the top, let me put the bottom cover back on and show you how it's also very easy to put back together again after you've made your changes. Just two screws. Okay. So let me show you how easy it is to take apart the top section. Now you may hear a lot of banging and clanking as I'm working with this. Uh, that's just because of the microphone on the camera. It's not really, I'm not really banging it that much as you might hear. Okay, so I'll start by taking off the top cover. Uh, say you have this circuit board like this and you made some changes where you moved a component somewhere close to the edge, uh, an edge where it presses the board down. What you would do 
is you mark where that component is. Actually, you wouldn't be able to latch it if you had a component there. You just want to mark where the component is. And you take this top cover off, put it in a mill, and machine out that area. Now, how hard is that? You just pull this pin out. Let me turn this so you can see. This pin right here, you just... I actually pulled it out a little bit. And, uh, let me put it back in so you can see how how it works. So it, it, this needs to be open just a tad. Take this pressure off. But you pull this pin out and this cover lifts right out just like that. Now you can put it in a mill and machine out the edges you need to machine out. It's that easy. And to put it back in you just set it in, put your pin right in there, and it's back together again. Ready to go. It's that easy to take this cover plate off. Okay, so let me take it back off again and I'll show you how to take out the bed of nails plate. Put this off to the side here. <clears throat> take the circuit board out. Now the bed of nails plate comes out with these four screws. And just loosen them up. I'm going to take my anti-static wristband off because I'm not handling the board anymore. Okay, four screws out and this top plate will then come out. I just used the lever latch handle to help me out a little bit. And let's take it right out. Just like this. Uh, now if there's parts that you needed to machine out clearance for, you can put this in the mill and machine out all the clearances you need to machine out so that your board fits in there nice and snug again after it's been changed. Uh, the, we, we really like to make these fixtures easy to update because people are always upgrading their products and you don't want to have to make the fixture a problem and always have to send it back to Test Electronics to update every time you uh, update, make a little change on your board. A lot of stuff you can do yourself. Uh, this shows how the, the plate underneath works and where the pins are. Okay, so to put this back together, well anyway, now you got access to all this and you can change pins out, uh, chain, update this if you need to, and that's how you work with this fixture. So to put it back together, you just put this plate back on, press it down. I, I like to work it a little bit just to make sure it, it kind of self-centers. Uh, you don't need to do that because these are countersunk screws and they kind of pull themselves in the center anyway. And also it aligns by these corners. Now what I like to do is put all the screws in just uh, loose at first and then tighten them down later in a crisscross fashion uh, just to help everything stay in alignment and bring itself in alignment. Okay, now the plates are back, the plate is back in, the bond plate, bed of nails plate. Now the press plate, that's easy enough, just put that in there and put the pin in. And now it's all back together again. And I'll put the circuit board in as soon as I get my band on. And show you how the test goes. There. Just like that. So that's how you take the protector fixture apart and put it back together. And I also wanted to show you, you saw when it was apart that uh, if you didn't go back on the video, but you saw that it when that the Probes are also embedded in anti-static material in the subplate underneath this. And a lot of people are concern, concerned about that. They say, well, uh, you can't put a 
compress a receptacle into a good anti-static plate that's fairly conductive and actually uh, get, you, you'll get too much resistance between it. And you will, you'll get about uh, between 10 mega ohms and uh, 100 kilo ohms. And so it, a lot of times it can be closer to 100 kilo ohms, or 2 mega ohms, or somewhere in that region when you try to press the pins directly into that. And if, they cl if anyone claims they're getting higher than that, they're not using good anti-static material. I've got a sample of what we do. We insulate our holes, and we have a technique, a proprietary technique for doing that, uh, so that we don't have any resistance. And you might wonder, well, how is that anti-static if, if you're insulating it from the anti-static material? Well, pins are always connected to something uh, electronic, which is connected eventually to chassis ground. So they aren't floating. They do dissipate static because they are connected to something, to ground through something. So let me give you this uh, ohmmeter test, just show you what it does. This is, I'll turn this on. Uh, 30 mega ohms, and I'll show you how this works. So we put it there, put it across two of these test pins, and there's no continuity unless I touch it. Now, let me touch it. I'll let go. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll touch it. There, let go. And you'll see that it has no continuity in this because we insulate the holes. Uh, when you buy a fixture, we tell you how to do it. It's a fairly simple process we do. Uh, but we don't want to give that away on the video because our competitors actually watch these videos more than our customers, unfortunately. Uh, and I can also show you how, how the surface resistance of this is. If you saw that, that... Uh, I don't know if you can see it from there, but just putting the two probes on the surface, uh, it, just, it just shows you that we were getting uh, about 14... 14, there's, there's 5 meg, 14 meg, uh, just by touching the surface of this anti-static material. So it shows you it's really good uh, anti-static material, and we have a way to insulate the probes so you don't get all kinds of results. But we do tell you how we do it when you buy the fixture, because when customers have a problem and there's something about the fixture they don't know, they tend to blame it on that part they don't know about the fixture. So you, once you understand it, it's, it's fairly easy. You'll get it. Okay, well that concludes the video demonstration for the protector test fixture. This is a 12-15 protector, meaning it's 12 inches wide. Uh, we have them from 8 inches wide all the way to 24 inches wide. Uh, thanks for watching.